terrific. Judy, please, without any further ado, you got the floor. Yes, when I came home last night, uh, I had a, I checked my, I checked my TV screen. We have Spectrum to see who's called that day. And by golly, Bill had called and said, hey, I need a favor. And I said, but we just talked about that late last week and you had it on your calendar. And he goes, I completely forgot about it. Well, food was involved. So off he went to his other activity today. And he is with a, he's with a, a, a nonprofit board and they are getting together uh, saying hooray, they have all had their COVID shots. So I let him off the hook there and he let Stan know what was going on. So this is an overview of Google. Um, many of us use a ton and a half of what is available via Google. Uh, hopefully there's two or three things in here that you haven't thought about, you haven't even heard of, or a couple of things about what you're using, a little tip or something. So here we go. So this is brought to you by APCUG Speakers Bureau. And from dorm to Googleplex, the story of the two kids that started in 1995 at Stanford University, didn't even really think they liked each other because they disagreed about almost everything. And then by golly, in 1996, they re released the initial version of Google for the users at Stanford to use it, see how it liked. Did you like it or not? Well, over two years, it became extremely popular. So they decided to found a company by the name of Google and it's just was a search engine. That was it. And the reason the way they came up with how they do their search is they thought the most popular things would be at the most useful. They would be at the top. And they called it Backrub. Thank goodness they changed the name to Google. I mean, I can't imagine myself saying Backrub it instead of Google it. So it was, a, the name is a play on math expression for the number one followed by a hundred zeros. And their mission is to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. And I think they've done a pretty good job on that mission. So from the dorm to the seventh and eighth richest in the world, uh, they're $14 billion richer than they were last Tuesday after Alphabet reported booming growth. Uh, every, the stocks are going up like crazy. And according to Forbes, Pages, uh, wealth has grown by seven point world. And Sergey went to 88.4 billion and he just surpassed Warren Buffett to become the planet's eighth richest person. So they started out in a little dorm room you never know what's going to happen when somebody has an idea. So these days, a new buzzword in technology is ecosystem or ecosystem. And it's being used more and more. And it just describes the products or platforms that deal with complementary applications. Apple, Microsoft, Google, they all want to be your be all to end all. They want you to be using all of their, their operating systems, their apps, their hardware. And I'm wondering who's going to win. Uh, is it going to be Microsoft or is it going to be Google? And then Linux has a complete suite of software. Google says we have the most comprehensive and diverse suite of apps and hardware that work together. We want to be your be all end all. And they produce no software that resides on your computer. So Google Apps, that's the name of the game. Uh, it's a Chrome browser and it's the foundation of their platform. But the Google Apps work across a right, wide variety of OSs. It's just not Chrome, it's Windows, iOS operating systems. And Bill's presentation says, we're gonna look at many apps and see how they interact with each other to make that comprehensive system that Google wants you to be using. So Android OS, it's for your touchscreen mobile devices as your smartphones and tablets. It is not designed for computers. It's a mobile operating system. And like a lot of other things in the world, it's 
you know, uses a Linux kernel and other open source software. You hear about all this proprietary stuff and then underneath it, you know, it's, you hear the word Linux and Android was not a Google find. It was developed by Android Inc. Google bought it in 2005 and it took them three years to get it up to the way they wanted it to be. And they launched it in 2008. So Android Auto, connect your phone to your car display and your Android app show on the screen. Gosh, gee, my car doesn't have a display. Darn it. So, but I do have Google Assistant. He sits over here to my left. But if you're using it on Android Auto, it helps you keep your eyes on the road and your hands on the wheel. In California, if you are holding your phone and talking on it, you get a ticket, you are fined. The next time you're caught, it gets more severe on up to they can take your driver's license away from you. And the system supports both touchscreen and button controlled head unit displays. And they're the centerpiece of this car's sound and information system. And there's your little friend Waze there. I love Waze. Uh, I use Google Calendar all the time. It helps me you know, with what in the world is happening in my life. This makes the 14th Speakers Bureau presentation I'm giving this month. So I need to keep myself on track as to what is exactly happening. I love customization. I don't, if, some, if somebody says, gee, I like it that way, that's the way it has to be. I'm gonna look for something that appeals to my eye. I'm a visual person and I have to like what I'm looking at in order to really get involved in it. So you can choose the date, to start the week, you can say Saturday, you can say Sunday, Monday, whatever works for you. You can choose the number of days or weeks to be in your calendar view, and you can even use custom colors. <coughs> Excuse me. Schedule all your events. You can have the description and location in case you forget where you're supposed to go. You can set up notifications to remind you, to remind other people. You can check how many people are coming. And what's cool, and you can create a Zoom meeting and reminders. You can share your calendar, view other people's calendars. The one down, the please download and port, that comes from uh, this meeting, the Windows SIG, that the email they send out, they would like you to click on the link in the email and add this meeting to your calendar. A meeting scheduled by Bob G., it's going to come to you looking like that, and his meetings automatically pop up in my calendar automatically, and it reminds me right there. I don't have to key in my own information. So he puts that and up at the top where it says add to, that's from Zoom, and that's where you add to the Google Outlook, whatever, calendars. Google Chrome, that's the web browser, and it was introduced for Windows in 2008. And the next year, oh my gosh, we're going to be cross-platform, and it's ready for Macs and Linuxes. But again, it comes from Google's free and open source project, Chromium, but Chrome is licensed as proprietary freeware. And it is currently the most popular browser in the world, with about 65% of the world population using it according to some company by the name of Stat Counter. And everything that I looked at just to verify the numbers here, if they were still uh, the correct numbers, uh, Stat Counter was all over the place. So Google Chrome, we're talking about Google Chrome. Well, version 88 took care of 36 vulnerabilities and Google has a bug bounty program where they will pay you if you find bugs. Well, for 88, they paid out $81,000. And one of those was marked critical, and that's the highest threat level. That means, hey, you guys better do something about it right now. And a guy by the name of Rory McNamara got $30,000 for finding that bug. So if you have some spare time, you might want to look into Google's bug bounty program. Zoom has one. A lot of other companies have that type of program. Nine of the 36 were tagged as high. That's number two serious. Three were labeled, three of them labeled high haven't been assigned a dollar amount. So, you know, they're going to pay out more than $81,000 for version 88. 
and Chrome, I love this, Chrome updates in the background. You need to finish it by you know, re-launching your browser. And if you wanna know which version you have, just go to about Chrome under help and uh, under the three dots. And so I was you know, adding this this morning before Huey's meeting. And I thought just for grins, I'm gonna look and see what version I have. By golly, I just got 89. All it wants me to do is, you know, click on that X and start the browser again, and I will be totally up to date. So I thought, how sad, this is old news. And your Chrome OS, that's supposed to be your, I love this, your not doorway to the cloud. It's an alternate to Windows and Mac OS, and it's all about being super simple that even your grandma could use it. And I'm thinking, I take exception to the, that. How about even your grandpa could use it? It works fast, boots up in seconds. It is, of course, supports Chrome apps. And they kind of you know, resemble some kinds of native applications and give you remote access to the desktop. And you can, you can use Google Docs, Drive for storing your files, photos for all your images, and there are a lot more things involved in it. And OS, Chrome OS is more secure than Windows laptops, since most of what you'll download will be from the Play Store. And remember, you never want to download apps from any place other than the Google or the Apple specific stores, not some third party, something rather twice removed where you might get something really um, crummy on your computer. And it frequently and automatically updates. So it has built-in virus protection. And Huey has told all of you, I imagine a gazillion times, all about Chromebooks. Um, I call him the Chromebook evangelist. So Huey's our Chrome evangelist, Chromebook. And they're turning 10 this year. Who knew they were around that long? You kind of think now that they're becoming so popular, <laughs> that they're not 10 years old. And of course they're using your Chrome at OS and they're sometimes called couch computers. Um, Chromebooks released since 2017 can also run Android apps. And some now the newer ones can run Linux apps. Well, they don't have hard drives. So they're lighter than most other laptops. So we don't mind sitting on the couch with them on our laps while we're doing something else. And they're ideal for people on the go because you're not lugging something around that is really heavy. And according to you know, one of those analytical research firms, uh, they were the best performing PC product Q3 in 2020. Uh, they increased to a record 9.4 million units, up 122% from 2019. So they are getting much more popular than the other people's laptops. And then there's Chromecast. It's just a little hardware device. You can see the picture up there. And it lets you wirelessly stream your audio and video content. And the little circular dongle plugs into an HDMI port on your flat screen. TV uh, and all the rest of those things. And I love that because the way my TV is set up here, it's at a slant because it's in a corner. And you know how heavy my credenza is, so to speak, that it sits on to pull it out to plug anything because all of the plugs and the ports are closest to the wall. Whereas my Samsung, it was closer to the room and it was a cinch to unplug mm -hmm. and plug everything in. And Google TV comes with Chromecast, new thing, as well as it comes with the most requested feature that they ever had, a remote control. So with Google TV, it brings everything together, movies, shows, live TV, and more. And it organizes all your subscriptions and organizes them just for you. And gee, you know, I never got around to using that Netflix password that my uh, one of my daughters let me use, and now I've sent her the, uh, a link to one of the many articles out there that says Netflix really doesn't want you to do that anymore. Google Home, uh, my hub is sitting right to my left over here, 
it helps you organize your home automation, anything that you have uh, and connected products. It enables users to speak voice commands. I talk to my assistant over here all the time. Uh, I use, I have some regular Google things and third-party services. They all integrate together wonderfully. Whenever I ask my buddy over here to do something for me, I always say thank you. And twice now, as I have gone into the hall and asked that person over there to turn off my family room lights, uh, I have heard a thank you. The first time it happened, I went, what? I turned the hall light on and I came back in and I looked behind my chair just to be sure there wasn't anybody back there. And it hadn't done it for weeks. And last week, somebody told me, thank you. And I can't figure out how that happens. Because when I first started with my home automation, it said, you don't have to thank me. And I thought, whoa, okay, but I think I will anyway. I don't know if you use Google contacts other than, you know, having the name fill in and the information when you are sending an email to somebody, but you can synchronize them across your mobile devices and OSs and uh, with third-party software and Google Sync app. And it's a way cool to, again, help keep your life in order. You can create personal mailing lists, one for the family, one for groups of people. If you have a, a digital photo SIG, you could make that a group. If for your general meeting, it could be all of these people over here. For your uh, genealogy group with your relatives, that could be another group. So it's easily put together so you can make this one-stop shopping, so to speak, to make it very easy to send emails out to different groups of contacts. And what I found out today was, of course, with Google, there's something new. Um, look, click on the nine dots to find out whether your interface is red and white or blue. I did that and I am up to date with the blue contacts. Google loves change. So it's like Microsoft. I just wish Microsoft would get in touch with regular people when they're coming up with something new for Word or the snipping tool and ask us if we really want what they want to give us. Google Docs, if you have not taken a look at Google Docs, you should. I could easily use Docs and Sheets with no problem and I'm a power a Word user. I could not use Slides. I could also use uh, LibreOffice's version of Word and Excel, and I could not use their PowerPoint. Uh, and number one, I have to be able to natively understand it, and that doesn't make any sense to me. And Google Slides is too austere for me. But I'm loving Google Forms. I've never used Google Drawings. I have created a Google website, and I have never used Google Keep but they're all there for you too. And you should really take a look just in case something hits you and the light bulb goes on and goes, oh, you know, I could use one of these, way cool. So Google Docs can be a web application. You can use it on your Android and iOS phones, tablets, Windows, and I love this. And I said, Blackberry, really? Did Blackberries come back in fashion again? Because I remember my business daughter had one a thousand years ago before they kind of went away. And of course, this is what you use with your Chromebook. So you can open Word documents, spreadsheets, PowerPoint presentations, all the LibreOffice things. And with Google Docs, you can easily, really, really easy to share a document, a spreadsheet or whatever with one person or a group of people. Hey, tell me what you think. Hey, you could write an email, you could attach it to six people and send it off to them, wait for them to open the email and then send their comments back or you can get together, so to speak, and send it out and let them, you know, do it on the fly and edited by one person, by everyone. And you can mark documents that these three people can edit them. Oh, you know, I really don't want these other three to edit them. So they, I'm going to only share them to view. So here's what the docs looks like. Very similar to Word. It's not as robust, of course, but hey, it's free and it works 
great. And Sheets, the same thing. I am not a, I'm just a casual Excel user. So this would work for me with absolutely no problem at all. And here's slides. And like I said, a little too austere for me. It does not work. But then again, I taught PowerPoint classes for over 22 years to adults. So I kind of expect a little bit more than this. But if you're just a casual PowerPoint creator, this is absolutely perfect. You do not have to pay for the office suite. Google Drawings allows you to create and edit flowcharts, one of those flow, flow charts with the cloud at the end that denotes the cloud that's really a data center. Uh, org charts, whatever a website wireframe is, maps, maps, diagrams. You can import images from the computer or the web. You can insert the ever wonderful flow chart shapes, arrows, scribbles, and text. And you can insert those in the drawings into other Google documents, spreadsheets, or presentations. Would this be a program that I would use? No, I don't do those kinds of things. But hey, one of you guys might do that. And they can be published online as images or downloaded in graphic or PDF format. And that's what it looks like. Google Drive. APC uses Google Drive to beat the band. We store, share our files and folders, and you can do it from any mobile device, tablet, or computer. All you need is a Gmail account. And of course, Drive includes doc sheets and slides. And uh, when you create and edit and save your docs and it saves in the background, it gets, it's kind of sometimes hard to get used to saying, where's the save button? I do control S every once in a while but it's automatically saving for you. You don't have to think about it. And you get 15 gigabytes of free storage to use across all of your devices. Of course, you know, remember they're, they're making all these billions of dollars and everything. So you can buy more space for your drive account. Manage your storage across photos, drive and Gmail. Google One is a subscription service. You get more cloud storage. And it makes working with your storage accounts very convenient. Hey, I find working with Google Drive just convenient too. Uh, and you can add images, emails, files, remove through Gmail, Google Drive, and Google Photos. And there's the paid plan. How you can get more starts at 100 gigabytes up to a maximum of 30 terabytes. Google Earth, well, we all know what Google Earth is. It's satellite imagery and 3D buildings and terrain for hundreds and hundreds of cities. And uh, it turns all the data, images and everything, aerial photography into a 3D globe. So we can see the world from various angles via the devices that we have. We can zoom into our house or anywhere else and then get really, really close and rotate it around. It covers more than 98% of the world and has captured 10 million miles of street view imaging that would circle the globe more than 400 times. The first time I was introduced to this was when they had hired what he said to us was an older person because there's just kids uh, up at corporate office. And there's just kids at all their satellite offices too. My kids, young people, hey, my kids are in their early 50s and they're still kids to me. But I mean, they really were, you know, in their 20s. And um, this uh, Google guy gave a presentation uh, at an ICON conference in Springfield, Missouri. And I read their newsletter and I thought, hey, maybe he'd come to Southwest uh, conference down in San Diego. So I got in touch and he did. And they had just hired him to work with the street view. And he laughed because the age level went up because he was there and he was just under 50. And we all got a kick out of that because back then we were all older than 50. But um, he had no idea what to expect when he got to the conference and he walked in and, you know, there was Microsoft, there was Corel, all the big names back in the day. 
And he was at our vendor fair on Saturday night and he went out and rented two huge uh, screens, monitors, and they had just finished doing street view of downtown San Diego. And we were the first ones that got to see that. And that was so much fun. So Sunday breakfast, he did the breakfast presentation up on the big screen. So everybody would have to, you know, have the opportunity to look at, at it at a large screen instead of just on a large com uh, computer monitor. But that was so much fun. And that was my introduction and his introduction to Street View. So if you are a private person and you do not want your house to be seen on Google Earth, you can follow those steps. Ask Google to um, blur your house's image. And remember, once you click submit, it's permanent. You can't undo it. But I can remember one of my students back in the day was so upset about this because he said they took it when his motorhome was parked in the driveway. And he was concerned if people came by his house and saw the motorhome was gone, they would rob it because they would realize they were gone on vacation. Uh, I use Google Forms all the time. I think it's the best thing that came down the pike. It is so easy for, to put things together. Um, you can put it together for your tech club member interest forms, board elections, event registration forms and feedback, surveys, quizzes. We use them for VTC and workshop registration. The uh, results are downloaded to um, one of the, their spreadsheets and it works beautifully. And it, and it is so easy and quick to put together. And once you have a format that you like, then you can just copy it and change the words. You don't have to recreate the wheel. And my let's see, not the third grandson is in journalism at Cal State Northridge. And he had to get some feedback from the community. So I actually think it was his mother, but the, put the Google form together. But uh, she posted the link on Facebook and said, you know, to all my peeps, will you please, you know, take time to fill out Jack's form. He needs it. He needs to put the survey results together and present it in class. And it was about four pages long. And it was all about what was happening in Santa Clarita, so to speak, and the world. And it probably took her oh, less than 10 minutes to put the whole thing together. And it's super simple to complete one of the forms and you click on submit and off it goes. And if you have no identifying information in it, it's totally anonymous. And that's what an untitled form looks like. And then you just fill in the information. Google Keep, it's a note-taking service. Um, Huey uses Evernote. I used to call Evernote my yellow post-it program. And back in the CRT days, I'd have yellow post-its all the way around my monitor because, you know, the outsides were probably wider than an inch. And it looks like Google Keep is the same kind of thing as Evernote is. Uh, your notes can be color-coded. Labels can be uh, the way you organize it. You can pin the notes, collaborate with them. And it's available on the web and mobile apps for the Android and iOS. And I'm a, a currently enamored of Edge's collections. Uh, I've kind of forsaken Evernote for collections. And as I get ready to do my group's monthly meeting and I run across articles and how to geek or make use of and all that good kind of stuff, I will create a uh, area for, uh, I just got finished for our April 14th meeting. And uh, I already have like three things in there. And I just send the website link over to it and then I can forget about it. And the thing is, is like, you know, it's just right there for me because I'm, I'm really liking the Edge uh, browser instead of Google, which surprises me, but I don't think I'll ever say Edge it. I'll still say Google it. But uh, I'm using collections, which is not as sophisticated as this, not as sophisticated as uh, Evernote, but it suits my needs. And Evernote's a way cool program. And here's your notes. And Gmail, I would imagine every single one of us has a Gmail account. And of course we can access it on the web. 
we can receive emails and send them out like we're sending it from somebody else. Uh, the one thing that I like is that if uh, uh, somebody sends me an email and on their end, the file is more than 50 gigabytes, um, it will send a link to me so I can click on it and download that video or whatever that is larger than 50 megabytes. But you can send up to 50, and which is cool. Up to 25, you're good. Uh, conversation view is the default. That's similar to a forum. When I set up somebody's computer, the first thing I do is change it to let them look at it and see if they like it. And they go, hmm, no, thank you. Uh, is set it up to like it's in date order. It comes in, then you get an answer later. Some people love to work on it, and that should say forum. And that's what conversation view is. That doesn't do anything for me. And they're really, really good about sending your spam to spam folder. I hardly, almost never receive any spam in my inbox. And I was at a meeting the other day and somebody was complaining horribly about spam and just didn't know what to do with it. And it was a difficult concept. And there were like three of us talking all over each other to try to explain to her that it was in its proper place. It was in the spam folder. And that was good news because it wasn't in her inbox. And we said, you know, just go into your spam folder, give it a quick look, make sure there's nothing in there by mistake and delete everything forever. And she goes, oh, that's how you do it. And I'm thinking users helping users is what it's all about. And this took me a while. They couldn't call them folders, so they called them labels. So hi, I'm showing somebody how to you know, organize their uh, inbox just like they do their file cabinet, which is what Bill Gates says your hard drive is. And I say, you know, you need to make a label. And they're thinking an address label? No, it's also like a folder, but they call them labels. And when we have the uh, yearly contests, I make a folder for each of the categories. And as an entry comes in and I send them a thank you to let them know that it's been received, I immediately send it over to the appropriate folder so I don't have to, when it comes time, just get the judges going and get everything up to uh, the drive, Google Drive. I don't have to search through my inbox. Everything is where it should be, right where Bill Gates told me to put it in a folder on my hard drive, but this is in the cloud instead. Google Duo is their version of the video chat and it's for Android and iOS. You can also use it via Google's Chrome browser on your desktop or your laptop. It's optimized for low bandwidth networks. It's got end-to-end -end encryption, which is what we really like by default. And it's based on phone numbers. So you can call someone from your contact list. Well, I can do that with my Google Assistant over here too. And it's like FaceTime, WhatsApp, and Skype. It says we offer voice calling as well as group video calls for up to 32 people. I love the fact that they have a knock knock feature on knock knock on the door that lets users see who's there before they answer the call. Maybe it's somebody that you know they just don't want to talk to, so that they don't have to answer it. And Google Fi or Fi is a different kind of phone plan. I don't know if anybody has gotten this or has seen it, but it provides telephone calls, messages, mobile broadbanding, using a variety of ways via cellular networks, Wi-Fi, via T-Mobile, and the US cellular networks. And depending upon the connection, they can tr transition between Wi-Fi and the cellular networks, and it automatically connects to Wi-Fi by hotspots with encryption through an automatic VPN. And it covers more than 170 countries around the world. You only can register for the service if you live in the USA. Most Android phones and iPhones work with it. You can lock calls and texts from strangers, set data 
budgets and more. And one thing is you can use your phone as a hotspot at no extra cost uh, at our um, tabletop simulator games workshop at the last VTC. John Kennedy's uh, son's internet was out in Las Vegas quite a And he went around trying to see what he could do. And he ended up using his phone as a hot uh, hot spot. And I'm going to let John know that if he happened to, ex I doubt he has limited data, but if he does, you know, APCUG should pay for it. Well, if you use this, you know, it's free. If you are into exercising, you might want to take a look at Google Fit. It's, a, it's Google's health tracking platform. You can use it with the Android OS, the Wear OS, and even with Apple's iOS. But it says it approaches things differently from other fitness apps. It combines your activity matrix to make them mean something to you, which is them saying, in other words, everything that you see on the Apple phone doesn't mean anything to anybody. So you might see that it took you 22 minutes to walk around during lunch. But what does that mean for your health? How did it affect you? What goals do you need to meet to stay healthy? Well, Google worked with the AHA to create two goals based on their activity recommendations. And the results are move minutes and heart points. And you can also choose who you want to share your fitness data with. And you can, oh, you just gained 20 pounds. I don't think I'm gonna share that with anybody. Oh, I'm sorry, I just deleted the information. Google Meet is Google's version of Zoom. I have been on almost all the other platforms, but I have never been on a Google Meet meeting. And I have my taxes done by AARP with the IRS at the Senior Center, which is closed. So when they have finished putting my taxes together, I will be meeting with the um, AARP, IRS trained folks on via Google Meet. So that will be my first time. And I'm gonna, you know, it'll be an opportunity to contrast and compare with WebEx and Zoom and all that good kind of stuff, Microsoft Teams and uh, see how it is, works the same. And, uh, you know, it's gonna be a learning experience and it's gonna be interesting and fun. Uh, they want me to sign my form that I have printed out in their presence and apparently, and show them to them that I had signed it. Okay, works for me. The one thing that Meet has that Google, that uh, Zoom doesn't, it has live captions. If you want to use live captions in Zoom, it is terribly cumbersome. And, oh, uh, spring, uh, May, June, July of last year, they said, after we get finished with, you know, updating and fixing Zoom and blah, 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 we're going to be working on the captioning. And that is one thing that hasn't happened. And what they want you to do is kind of silly. So I'm hoping they, you know, get their act together and it becomes built into the Zoom app. And I just looked this morning and I couldn't find anything other than you know, they went up by a factor of 30 between January and April. Uh, I can't find any, you know, status of anything more than that. But we all know that everything went up because of meeting online. And that because of the pandemic, they suspended its usual 60 minute limit for unpaid accounts, which is 20 minutes more than Zoom gives you. If you have a Android phone, you're probably almost positively using Google Photos. They can store them up to 16 megapixels and videos up to 1080. And oh, this is way cool and grand and glorious. And it will be free and unlimited until June 1. And the configuration of storing your photos has completely changed. If you want to watch a um, video or get some information, I would go to geeksontour.com out of Florida. Chris has explained it wonderfully. And uh, things are changing and they're getting a little bit more restrictive with 
everything, so to speak. And so you need to keep up to date or you don't, you know, you really don't know what's going on or think, oh, you know, I have a Prime account. Maybe I could just use the Prime uh, unlimited photos storage along with my Prime account. But then if you decide you don't want to use Prime anymore, what happens to your photos? So it's a catch 22. And it's just a cloud service that lets you access your photos at anybody's house to show them to them or via any device that you have. And there's way cool things. Again, if you have not had a presentation on Google Photos by uh, Chris and Jim Gould, Geeks on Tour, you should definitely book one. You can book it through the uh, Speakers Bureau if you would like. And they are they are a fun group, and they are they they build themselves as the geeks who tour, and they're touring via Zoom right now. But uh, Google Photos analyze your photos for similar faces and groups them together in the people category. And oh my, it can even track us as we age, for heaven's sakes. And it uses geotagging data, but again, it can determine locations and older pictures by analyzing the landmarks marks and when you think everybody you know we're being looked at by everybody well it is true they can find everything they have a things category for cats concerts food um, you can manually remove categorization errors and recipients of shared images can view the web galleries without needing to download the app all you need to do is swipe your fingers across the screen to adjust the services photo editing settings as opposed to using sliders. And of course, you can share your images with the social networks and other services if you'd like to. And it generates web links that Google Photos users and non photo users can access and a new feature shows a heat map of photo locations and that was added in 2020. Google Play, well, that's where you get all the apps. You wanna to go to Play or you wanna to go to the Apple Store for sure, one or the other, depending upon which device you have, which you know, is your favorite you know, operating system for your devices. It is the official app store for certified devices. But you know you have to be very careful when you download things. You need to make sure that you check everything out, all the permissions and everything. Take that extra step to make sure that you know something is not sharing your contacts that doesn't need to. My goodness, does your flashlight really need to sh know, know something about your contacts? The answer is no. So when it says, hi, can we share your, would you share your contacts with us? You're going to say, no, thank you. And they're either free, of course, or there is a charge. Google Play comes directly on your Android device. Three million apps are available. And 2019 and 20, 250 million apps were downloaded daily. Oh my gosh, that is a gazillion million. And there's a place where there's editor choices. Hey, would you like to take a look at five meditation apps to find focus, de-stress and more. So I have no clue who the editors are. Um, it could be three people sitting on a corner for all I know, but they've looked at you know meditation apps and they think these are the five best for you. And, of course, we go take that with a grain of salt. I'll choose my own. And you are always reading in the paper that, uh, or the, the blogs that uh, they have just found, uh, you know, a hundred more uh, Android apps that have uh, bad stuff on them. So again, be extremely careful when you are downloading anything. Make sure it is virus and phishing and all that good kind of stuff free. And there's Google TV. It has had several names. It was Google Play Movies and TV or Google Play Movies. And it's an online video and demand service operated by, of course, Google. And it provides movies, TV shows for purchase or rent. 
uh, depending on the availability. And I'm sure that's the availability in different regions. And it came out in 2011 as Google Movies and changed it to digital distribution services via Google Play in 2012. Please do not confuse this with YouTube TV. It's apples and oranges. I love YouTube. Ah, three former PayPal employees left PayPal and created YouTube. That's kind of like the Zoom people who left Cisco and probably made a fortune. Well, you know, a year later, Google bought the site for $1.65 billion. And these peak guys had just come from uh, PayPal. <laughs> I love it. Hey, if you've got a better idea, why not try it? That's like wise. We're getting into the wise speakers and scales and all that good kind of stuff, doorbells, door knocker, you know, whatever. And they worked at Amazon, and one of them wanted an inexpensive speaker. So three people went, left Amazon and founded Ways. They, too, are probably worth a fortune now. So if you've got a good idea, you know, you might want to do something about it. But anyway, YouTube offers advertising, free streaming, access to exclusive content, offline video playback, on and on. And you can also watch APCU's VT and workshop videos on YouTube. And Huey just got through talking about all the groups that have YouTube have uh, YouTube channels. And that was one of the things that I have on my bucket list for APCUG2.org is to contact the groups and say, hi, let me know if you are, uh, you have a YouTube channel. So other groups can take a look and see if they want to view some of your um, older meetings. And, you know, like I said, that's on my bucket list to do. And I will send out an email and hardly nobody will get in touch with me. So then I'll have to go to everybody's website. And hopefully everybody that has a YouTube channel will have a link on their website to that YouTube channel. And there's YouTube Music. It's a streaming service. Offers a premium tier. Which you don't get any ads. You get audio only background playback. You can download songs offline and the subscription benefits are also offered to subscribers of Google Play Music and YouTube Premium. I know when I go to bed at, in, at night, I ask my buddy over here to play some smooth jazz. And with that, I get ads. It's like a radio station. And for some reason, one night I said, play some New York jazz. And I get a station for that, but there are no ads on that one. And I have never been able to figure out the difference because I'm not paying for my YouTube music. And it has new releases. If you want to cast your cloud library speakers to Google Nest smart speakers, you have to have a premium subscription. And you can save, hey, it's your wish list for upcoming releases. And that was added last May. And there, can, do you want to listen to some of Classic Rock's greatest hits? They've got 142 tracks that you can listen to each and every one of them over time. I love hip hop. I love that Geico commercial with those guys scooping those hot fudge Sundays out like that. Well, they have 181 tracks and so on. Google Maps, it's way cool. Satellite imaging. Aerial photography, 360 degree interactive panoramic views, real time traffic conditions. How do you get there from here to there via by foot, 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 not feet, foot, car, and bicycle and air? They said it's in beta. I could not find that it's out of beta. And public transportation. And it's a good, it's a great service. When the senior center moved from New Hall to, um, they thought it was Canyon Country, but it really wasn't. It was Saugus. I had a lot of interaction with Google Maps because the area had not been mapped. And they kind of had guessed where it was and they had it over one of the main, off the other side of one of the main drags and right where there was a shopping center. <laughs> well, no, that's not where the senior center was. So, you know, you never know who you're dealing with with this, but you put it in where this is where it really is. And you can pinpoint it on the map and uh, all that good kind of stuff. So it took me a while. First, they put it on the wrong side of Golden Valley. 
And, but then I told him, no, it's on, you know, and I drug the little pointy thing over and put it right where it was. So I finally got it all together and wrote a description. They included it in there. And, but with MapQuest, it was way cool because I actually was interfacing with a live person because he instantly got back to me with an email saying, okay, we're going to work on this and we will get back to you by the end of the week. And by the end of the week, they got back to me. They had placed it in the correct position, the whole nine yards. And I thought, hmm, anonymously with Google. But I had, of course, MapQuest is much smaller. But I thought it was so much fun to be able to deal with a real person and get, you know, instant satisfaction, so to speak, about trying to let people know where, you know, the new senior center had moved. 2020, over a billion people use Google Maps every month, and they use it as a route planner, find available directions, driving, public, walking, biking, uh, partnered with over 800 public transportation providers to adopt GTFS, making data available to third parties. And um, you can share your routes, and it has incognito mode an eyes-free walking navigation feature. And I'm wondering if that means you can close your eyes and use it. I don't know. Maybe it makes comes via sound, but I love that line there. Uh, Google Messages, it's another way of sending messages instantly. And it's developed for the Android uh, operating system, available on the web, uh, requires the phone to be connected to the internet if you are using it that way. And it uh, has feature integration with Google Duo. And in 2020, the app had more than a billion installs. Google Pixel, I am on my third Pixel phone. I love it whenever there's an update to the Android OS, so to speak, I get it instantly. Whereas my um, friends who have, you know, Samsung's with, uh, Verizon and other things like that, it might be, you know, weeks, months before Verizon gets around to rolling it out. But if you have a Pixel, you are getting updates, you know, whenever they are out, it's there. And it reminds you, hey, you know, you need to download. This is brand new. And the thing is, is when you have a Pixel, you just can't go to Best Buy and say, you know, could I get a case? And, you know, one of those little thingies on the back that pops back and forth. And of course, the, the, the popping in and out, I can get one of those, but nobody has any Pixel accessories unless you go to Amazon.com. So I find that interesting. So that tells me it's not the world's most popular phone in any way, shape or form. But, uh, you know, the very first uh, model that came out, I was right down at Best Buy, Best Buy buying one. I just wanted to have one just for grins. And the Pixel includes laptops, tablets and smartphones as well as several accessories if you go at the Google to google.com and buy them or you go to Amazon. Google search, I'm always saying it, well, Google it. And when I Google it, I type my search questions in complete sentences and I figure Google is gonna pick out what is necessary to find it. And John Kennedy is right behind me saying, Judy, you need to start saying duck, duck, go it because it's much safer. But Google uh, search is the worldwide access across all platforms. They've got 92% of the market share as of the end of last year. And they handle more than 5.4 billion searches every single day. When I went to visit Google's home office out of San Jose, they have something that just kind of cascades. You can see through it. It's like a waterfall. And I said, you know, and it stand, it's out from the wall. And I said, what's that? It was all the searches that were being made globally. And it just kept going and going and going. And I thought, well, that's interesting. And learned a lot of good stuff when I was, you know, up there to find out, how, you know, how Google ticks. And they were all young people up there too. And so, um, I can't imagine that that thing is still going with that many searches per day because this was probably 15 years ago when I was up there. Um, Google search consists of a series of localized websites 
And of course, those is the biggest one is google.com where you can Google it. And there's a definition link. If I want to know the definition of anything, I just type define and the word. And I get any instances, many, you know, different dictionaries and various and places. And, you know, I choose the one that makes the most sense to me and is super simple for people to understand. If it's got a got a lot of gobbledygook in it, I'm thinking if I don't get it, you know, hey, so uh, and it right there, define and whatever it is. If you're not sure of uh, the spelling of something and you're someplace where there's no spell check, you can put it up there and it'll instantly correct it for you. So in addition to searching, I use a Google's you know, Google it for a lot of other really easy things to have happen. And it includes a button that says, I'm feeling lucky. Well, back in the day, you would be taken to directly to the first result and it would be someplace fun. It would be something that, oh Lord, that's not anything I'm interested in. But I'm feeling lucky, of course it was changed. So it no, no longer has that function. When you click, you might get, uh, you want to go to someplace artistic, adventurous, playful, generous, funny, or do you want to go to see the Google Doodles, which are really, really cute. And uh, you can use Google Images to search for images, images.google.com. I encourage every single person to never use the image unless you have clicked through to the site where it is located to make sure it is not copyrighted. But it was introduced, I love this, it was introduced in 2001 because people could not find a picture of Jennifer Lopez's green Versace dress that the regular search could not handle. So they came up with images.google.com. Go figure. And here's the Google Doodle. They often have contests with high school kids to come up with, or junior high kids to come up with Google Doodles, and um, if you have, if you win, you know, you get something, your school gets something, and it gets featured on the Google Doodle page, and some of them are really, really cute, and the first doodle was just a plain old ordinary stick figure drawing behind the second O in Google, and the revised logo was just, you know, hi, let's have a good time with this, and they used, the founders said that they used it for we're out of the office. And two years later, they asked their current webmaster, who was just an intern, to produce a doodle for Bastille Day. And then he was appointed, I love this, as the chief doodler. And doodles started showing up more and more regularly on the homepage. And really, they are just really cute. You should take time to find the page and take a look at some of the uh, Google Doodles over time and the kids who have submitted and won or not the, their version of the Google Doodle. And with Google Sites, you also can use Google Sites to create a website quick and dirty. It's no programming skills, no HTML. My first website I did in HTML and I've amazed myself. I can go into the background and you, you never forget it. You can read a little bit of what it means. And, but with sites, you don't have to have any skill, really. You just need to know how to move and drag and drop and edit, and you're done. And um, it, it fits it so it looks better across devices. I was coming up for a new format for the, the group sharing list on apcug2.org. And I came up with something I thought was cool. I passed it by John Kennedy and he says, well, you know, this is the way I, you know, I think if you move this over here, it'll look a little bit better. So I redid it how he suggested. And I, you know, kind of had exception with that. So I got in touch with the gal who's the programmer and put the website together in the first place. And she said, oh, Judy, she said, just make it one list because you have to remember how it's going to look on somebody's phone. Something that, you know, I went, oh, well, duh, of course. So my formatting John's suggestions flew out the window and it's super simple to just put a list together, so to speak, that somebody can scroll through it very easily with the phone. And the one thing with Google Sites is they have 24 seven email chat and form phone support with a real person, which doesn't happen often. 
in our tech world. Google Groups, if you want to get in touch with your members easily, uh, people used to use Yahoo uh, Forum and Google Groups is the same thing. And I, these are the two groups that I belong to. One is the Columbus Computer Society group and the other is um, JJ Dwight Johnson's group, the Lake County Area Computer Enthusiasts. And I was, you know, joined both within two days, which is very interesting. And here's what you get on a weekly basis, if not more than one a week from the Columbus Computer Society. They have someone that this is his job. He gets the information from people and this is his volunteer thing. He sends this out. Obviously he's Wood Turner something. And here's the Lake County and they have 993 posts, so to speak. And uh, I just received one from Phil Bach, their president. And he said, oops, sorry, I forgot to give you the passcode so people can get into the meeting. And then the next thing you know, you will be getting a, a recording of like you see right there on March 13th, the recording of the meeting. This is the passcode for another meeting. But he was he talked about uh, Huey's meeting today, WinSig next meeting. Uh, he, that was posted by JJ on uh, March 11th. Uh, there's their Zoom invitation. And then a couple of people sent something up about World Backup Day, which is March 31st. We are having a backing up workshop on Wednesday, March 31st, since it is World Backup Day, and we are celebrating that. They have a free cloud gaming service. Of course they do. But if you plan to use it, you have to purchase the games from its store in order to stream them. And you can use it with a variety of game pads. You can also play it on your iPhone or your iPad using the Safari app. And there's something called Tilt Brush. That's a room scale 3D painting, a virtual rea reality app available. And whoever Scaleman and Hackett is, I'm sure they're probably well-known people in the Tilt paintbrush world, but it lets you paint in 3D space with virtual reality. Your room is your canvas, your palette is your imagination. So if you are interested in something like this, this is something that you want to give it a try. And I will admit that person there. And I love Google Translate. I thought it was slick. I had my VPN. I was going to be in Germany. Well, I was noodling around. And of course, all the websites are in German. Yeah. And so I used the Translate fit feature. And automatically, there it was in English for me. And Bill, Bill has told me that he has this on his phone. And he goes down to um, Dominican Republic. He does not speak whatever version of Spanish or Portuguese that they use. And so he uses the Translate app on his phone to make it super simple when he's driving around town or when he's talking with people who do not speak any English at all. And so he thinks this is a way cool app. And I do too, because it's some one of the ways you can learn what various sundry words mean. And as of 2021 supports 109 languages. As of 2016, which is the latest stats, over 500 million total users. So you can imagine how those have gone up. And uh, it's a cool function that identifies text in a picture taken by the user. Translate the text on the screen instantly by images. I'm in Southern California, so I said goodbye. And it is really adios. Super simple. Did it in just seconds, that translation. And Google Voice, I think every computer club should have a Google Voice phone number on their website because there are still people out there who like to pick up the phone. They're not going to talk to anybody, but they certainly can leave a message. It comes into your email, and then you can get back to them however you want. It's free. Um, you know, you can have it work with your 
regular phone when uh, David uh, Williams would call me in the middle of the night, he was using his Google Voice. Um, and it's like I said, it's one of the things, it's, it's a lost art, so to speak. But again, some people are more comfortable picking up the phone and saying, hey, you know, can you tell me a little bit about your group? What is it you do? I don't quite understand it. And if they don't have a phone to leave a message with, you're not going to get that person because that's the way they, they're, they're at that level of communicating. And again, it's free. And Google Assistant, uh, Bill James has 27 home automation devices. His three newest ones are Sudsy, Bounce, and Herman. Herman is a wise robotic vacuum. And Bob G has one. His name is Alice too, because Alice is his wife of 61 years. And uh, Sudsy is a GE Wi-Fi washing machine. And Bounce is his dryer. And with the Wi-Fi washing machine, you fill it up with soap, liquid soap. And he says, he'll think, oh my gosh, you know, I forgot to do the laundry today. And he's in bed. He's got his phone there. He just tells the washing machine to start. And when he gets up in the morning, he pops everything in the dryer. We need to work on how to get it into the dryer and the dryer going next. Uh, Google Assistant can do all kinds of different things. I'm perfectly capable of going into my garage and turning on the light, but I love to say, you know, <laughs> turn on the garage lights or whatever. I'm just having fun with all of my home automation stuff and chatting with my friend over here and getting that you're welcome every once in a while. Waze is a fun app to have, community driven. Uh, my youngest daughter and I had to drive Jack over to uh, Anaheim during peak traffic time on a Friday night for a hockey game. And I sat with the phone in shotgun, glued to Waze. Okay, accident ahead, you know, and it would say, get off here and everything. And then we would see accident and we drive by and there's nothing there. So you then you can report there is no accident any longer. But it was certainly a way to uh, take my attention for two and a half hours of freeway driving in Southern California. And Google Cardboard, if you is only available at Amazon now, but it started with um, virtual reality developed by Google for use with a head mount for a smartphone. And they still are out there at Amazon.com. And Google has hardware. Remember, they want you to be their be-all, end-all. They want you to use their hardware, their operating systems, their apps, and all that good kind of stuff. So they've been working for over two de decades to make, to make their mission come to life. And the big breakthroughs have come at the intersection of artificial intelligence, software, and hardware all working together, which fulfills their mission. And uh, it isn't artificial at all. It's helping you get real things done every day, giving you a shorter route to work, a gorgeous vacation photo, a faster email response, the garage light turning on. Um, its goals is to create something that serves a purpose in people's lives all the time. They're making all that money. Products that are so useful, they make people wonder how they ever lived without them. Those are the Google Pixel hardware things. Google Nest, I have a lot of those. I like the GEC light bulbs. And you can have a podcast. Go to blogger.com. Do you have something that you're passionate about? The, you know, would you stop talking about that? You, you talk about that all the time. Well, create yourself a blog so you can talk to more people. They can listen to you than the ones that you keep saying the same thing over and over to. And there's got to be other people out there that love the same thing you do. And they would like love to listen and learn about it. So you can go to blogger.com. We just had a workshop at the February BTC by Kelly uh, Galvin out of the... Uh, Green River Resort Computer Club in Arizona on creating a podcast with blogger.com. It has step-by-step -step instructions on how to do it. And Google says we're one-stop shopping. We have easy to use templates, hundreds of background images. You can get a free domain name. If you want to, you can earn money with your 
podcast, uh, and it uses Google's analytics to tell you which type of podcast is, you know, getting the most hits, for want of a better word. Huey has one. Other people have podcasts. Uh, Tampa Bay Technology Center, that is, of course, in Florida, uh, they have a podcast studio. And members can reserve the studio for $5 an hour. That's the equipment they have. And they occasionally hold classes on how to properly use the equipment as well as how to market and grow your podcast. In November of 2019, we, we being APCUG, had a conference in Florida. And one of their members, Michael Kroos, gave a podcast presentation. And I, he talked about the classes. And I said, you know, I would love it if some way you could offer classes to APCUG people and on how to create a podcast. And the uh, it was the Moose Lodge where we met and they wanted to start a podcast. And they said, hey, you know, we'd love to be able to do something like that because of course, Tampa Bay was on the other side. You know, it wasn't close to where they were located. And so uh, nothing ever had came of that, but that was, I thought that was one of my better ideas so you know we could all you know actually have a class on how to do this and they could talk about the pitfalls and whatever google nest is just a brand of their home automation products uh the nest Lear learning thermostat i failed that at my house i have a such a really nifty um password that turning it back and forth and hitting the cap and then going to the letter and then turning back and hitting, you know, getting rid of the lowercase or the number uh, drove Bill and I crazy one night when I was standing in the corner trying to do this. And I finally gave up. So I tell people, you know, have a really good password. But remember, you're going to need, need to be using the password to set up some of your home automation devices. And it might be the pits. And I've been to several Google locations. So this is a quick overview of them. This is Google Venice. When you walk in to almost any Google location, it has that on the left and it is up one wall across the ceiling and down the other side. And it has everything Google on it. And they have play and co collaboration time. They encourage you to get together with a group and chat and play you know, whatever kind of game you would like to while you're doing it. Um, and in Venice, pet employees can bring their pets to work. There's their little station there. And since you can easily walk to the beach, please bring your bicycle and your, and your surfboard. And after work, you can hook your surfboard to the back and just whip down and do some surfing before you go home. And there's always free fruit, food at every single Google place you go. And it is excellent food up in home office. You had the Mexican food station, the Asian, the Italian, the American, and on and on and on. And they have special Ben and Jerry's Google ice cream that they make only for Google. Of course they do. And you ate off China plates with real silverware and real glassware. There was none of the paper stuff or anything like that. And you were free to go to any one of the stations and order what you wanted cooked right on the spot for you. And it's all about ideas. So on the right is a little area. The light bulb is hanging over that from the second story. And you can sit there and re relax and mull over some ideas with people, do some brainstorming. And here's a view, which I wasn't supposed to take, of the Google repair place right in front there where the guy with the yellow shirt is. Uh, when you come into Google in the morning, you pick up a laptop and you're off and running. You do not have your own assigned computer because, of course, everything is in the cloud. And this is a collaborating wipe-off board in the walkway. Every Google place that I have been to, and I've been to three, um, they all have this kind of collaboration where you can, st again, stand there and brainstorm and everybody can write on this huge, obviously, wipe-off board the ideas. And I went to YouTube and Playa Vista. And this was the entry when you walked in. This is what you saw. 
And on the right was the upcoming events that was happening with YouTube. And this is a fairly new installation. Uh, the Los Angeles Computer Society, they scheduled a tour. Their president was a tech teacher at a local high school and he uh, scheduled a tour for his students. And oh my, they needed chaperones. Even though I live uh, at least an hour away, they asked me if I wanted to go to uh, YouTube to be a chaperone. And I said, darn Dutton. And off I went through the, the go, to, go to work traffic in the morning and it was well worth it. And again, here's their food station uh, up in a home office. The, in addition to uh, the lunch area, each floor, and if it's a large floor, they will have one, one or more food stations with fruit and drinks and you name it. And you walk through that into the YouTube eating area. And this is what it looked like on the outside. And there was a studio on the right, all around the bottom. And then Bill has included a ton and a half of stuff. And I am finished. Are there any questions? And I hope you got one new thing because when I attend something, all I need is one new thing. And I got one the other day at a meeting and I was the most happy person in the world because <laughs> it was something very useful. So any questions as a substitute person? Well, first let me add, please, my gosh, that was fascinating. Uh, very thorough and incredible. I, I had forgotten at least half of the kinds of things that- Oh, I'm so happy because I completely redid Bill's presentation. It took me five hours last night. Oh, my <laughs> well, I'm sure you would have outshone his, it was just incredible. That, that well, Huey you understands, I'm a teacher. Huey's a teacher. When yeah. we give presentations, we like to teach. Well, well I, I just really thought it was fantastic. So. And I'm so sorry I am missing all of my pictures of home office. The visit was absolutely incredible. They have no, uh, no transportation. They had black buses. They would go into San Francisco, pick up staff and drive them down. There is nothing around them. Back in the day, there was no shopping or anything. That has all changed now. Everything is solar even back then. And I got to go up there because of the Google guy coming down to Southwest and inviting Jerry and Judy Clark and me to come up there. And we arrived, knocked on the door and he'd forgot we were coming. <laughs> You've got two, you got, two you got two people asking questions. Uh, I think Steve was first and then Stephanie. Yeah, I, I just want to second uh, Stan's motion there. Two five-star presentations today, really terrific. I got a lot out of both. In fact, I'm so glad they're recorded, right? We can watch these again on YouTube, yes. right? Yes. So they're fantastic. And I can't hardly think of anything you didn't cover except for one thing, Judy. Or maybe you but, did, or maybe I missed it. And, and that is Google extensions. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know something, where we got this from are the nine dots. Yeah, okay. And well, that's not there, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm writing a note. The, <laughs> I, I just want to uh, mention one that I found extremely useful. Uh, it's called Dark Reader. Um, toward the end of the day, if I've spent a lot of time on the computer and the brightness of the background, uh, just my eyes start to hurt a little bit. But if you click on dark reader it makes the background dark but it doesn't mess up the pictures i also have an extension called in, uh, color inverter and and that works too but it, it messes up some of the material that's that's on the screen but dark reader does not in fact i was so impressed by it and it's free but you know they asked for a donation so i sent 20 bucks but you know these guys are just terrific uh, the innovation and the creativity that goes into Google, all of it. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, thank you very much. It was outstanding, both you and Huey's. And it started in a dorm room with two people that really didn't like each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Stephanie, you were next. Yes. I, I'm curious, where do you get the Google handouts? I'll 
send, how do you do that, Huey? Okay, let me tell you. Um, the uh, Bill put this together because Terry Harvey, the program chair of the Wisconsin All Users Computer Club, asked him to. And uh, he came up with the, uh, well, I came up with the handouts because I'm a teacher. And it was posted on their group's IO account. So everybody could go up and, and get the PDF of the presentation and click through to all of the handouts. How do you do it, Huey, with, if you have handouts? Well, usually if it's my handouts, I'll, I'll post them on my website. Uh, if you'll send them to me, uh, I'll see if we can put them in either our uh, TechSig uh, forum using uh, the Google Groups, or we'll, we'll somehow get them up to the website, the CFCS website, and they'll be able to download them from there. They're, they're cheat sheets and stuff like that for a lot of the stuff that was talked about because a lot of us use this stuff, but we really don't delve, we don't do a deep dive into all of the stuff that's there to use. So um, I'll send you the links. And I'm Michael. particularly interested in anyone who has that kind of information for the Pixel 4a camera. What? It, 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 it's just, a, you know, I skipped about six generations of uh, Android and switching oh. off of an old phone. And I did find a YouTube program on Android 10, which gets you a, a long ways. But and the, I, I, nev I never your answered your email about the Pixel. I'm sorry for not doing that. You're busy, but, Judy. But <laughs> We've yeah. been working all the time. <laughs> yeah. At two in the morning, she sends me emails. <laughs> but remember, we're retired. <laughs> we're supposed to have all this free time. I know. I have the same problem. <laughs> you still work. Mike, Mike Leach. Leach. Yeah. Mike, Mike Leach. Leach is next. Go ahead. Unmute yourself, Mike. There we go. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Uh, I'm on a PC with no camera. So uh, anyhow, uh, uh, Judy, I really love your presentation very much. I have three quick questions, not great in depth. Do you have a blog that you have personally? In other words, I have a million questions to ask you. The easy way to do it is to go to any blogger that you might have. Uh, I'm sure everybody would like to pick up the phone and talk to you. and <laughs> you drive you crazy. <laughs> uh, also, too, in Europe, uh, what is the current fascination or, or situation there? I'm sure they have a legitimate point regarding the monopolistic situation with Google. Uh, however, we can see all the benefits of it. It's the same benefits we got out of Microsoft. I'm just curious where we stand there. And lastly, when I go to uh, uh, do research online, uh, is there the benefit of incognito with Google uh, versus perhaps uh, uh, duck, duck, or is there anything such? I mean, what would you say as far as a fairly private uh, and uh, incognito method of doing research online? And that's it. All I got, and I love talking to you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Huey, you got headphones on. Can you the overview of the first question? Did he want my contact information? Yes. Basically. Jay Talour, J T A Y L O U R at apcug.org. Got it. Um, I have tried other search engines. I, like I said, I like Edge. Google gives me what I want. I really don't care how much they know about what I'm doing because it instantly gives me at the top like it's supposed to after you skip the stupid ads, uh, what exactly what I need. I tried DuckDuckGo. And I thought, I'm going to be that John Kennedy person. I am going to be have it more private. And it doesn't meet my needs. So I have been doing this for over 30 years. I always sit, would tell my students, my information is out on all the bathroom walls and the internet. Because back in the days, we didn't know. We weren't supposed to share all of our email address and all that good kind of stuff. So my stuff's already out there. And that's the way it goes. So I, I'm a Google kid. 
I'm a, I'm a Windows kid, and I know they know everything about me in every way, shape, or form. And I can't help that because that's what I prefer to use. Other people love DuckDuckGo. They love Brave now. Uh, I used Opera for a while. People got upset with that. It has a built-in VPN because the, a Chinese company bought it. Russian company bought Kaspersky, so people won't use that now. But hey, if you love Kaspersky or you, you know, you use Opera, you go poo poo to you people. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. Nope. St Stan, are you still there? You're here. Uh, okay. Are there other questions? Michael, don't forget to uh, unraise your hand. <laughs> Called lower your hand under reactions. I understand. Thank you. Does that do it? Yep. Beautiful. All right. There were several people that came in late, and I just want to emphasize that both Huey's presentation and also uh, Judy's will be available on the CFCS YouTube link that will be sent to the TechSig within a day or so. TechSig, uh, you, you said you'd get both of them. Uh, you're recording this one as well, right? That's correct. And you can go to my website and go to the channel, uh, hit the button to take you to the channel and it'll, you'll be able to find them easily that way. Terrific. There's, the there's Don Scarta, the president of the Waka Group who got Bill's original presentation in January. Judy, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks for having me as a yes. substitute. Anytime. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, I think I'd like to wrap up. I just have one quick announcement for the uh, Central Florida computer people that are with us. The Apple SIG meets tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock virtually. The Board of Directors meets this Thursday, the 15th, at 6 o'clock. And the tech sig meets next Tuesday at three. That's March twenty third at seven o'clock. Um, well, once again, it was a marvelous afternoon. I thought you, your presentation was fantastic, and Judy, just very impressive. I'm so glad you were able to pitch in. Thank you for putting in the time. I got an awful lot out of it, and I'm sure that most of our members did. I'm glad, kiddo. So, if there's no other questions, I I think we'll. Uh, Oh, there's a chat came up and oh, John Roy is saying another great session, Judy and Huey. Uh, so that that's great. And at this point, Huey, have you stopped the recording? I will do so right now. Don't forget to do that. And um, 